Not all ponds are created equal, and designing the wrong one could cost you thousands, if not millions of dollars of earthwork costs, or completely screw up your site design. So how do you actually decide between a dry pond or a wet pond? Let me show you. One of the main things that we look at first as civil engineers in determining a dry or a wet pond is the seasonal high water table. The seasonal high water table is going to govern your design for stormwater. Now, typically in Florida and in the Southeast, when you don't have very high elevation above sea level and when you have that higher seasonal high water, you're most likely going to see more wet ponds, at least in very large sites where you need to meet an earthwork balance. But let me back up a little bit. So seasonal high water table, how is this different than the groundwater? Well, the seasonal high water ground table is the ground table at a rainy season. So typically in Florida, that rainy season is anywhere between June, August, you know, think of hurricane season. This is when the ground is most saturated with water. Now, typically you're working with a geotechnical engineer to gather bores as shown here and to help us understand that seasonal high water elevation. Now, when we're looking at this, I'm noticing that the estimated seasonal high groundwater is anywhere between one foot to maybe even half a foot in some cases. So if you are cutting the earth, you will be striking into the seasonal high water table. So if you plan to excavate anywhere between one foot or more, you're going to have a wet pond unless you decide to fill your entire site and create these artificial dry ponds to allow for water to percolate into the ground. Which brings me into number two, it really depends on your earthwork. So let's say if you had a really huge site like this, you know, something that's 90 acres or 100 acres, you're going to want to get as much dirt as possible. And the only way to get dirt is to scrape the earth. But like I said, if you're trying to get as deep as possible and your seasonal high water is one foot below the existing earth, where well, you're gonna get some wet ponds. There's just no way around it. Now for the smaller projects, like a commercial project, you're not going to need as much fill. Therefore, you can get away with either having a dry pond or some underground exfiltration trench, which actually leads me into number three. Why would I choose a dry pond or a wet pond? Sometimes it's about the aesthetics and what you're trying to fit into your site. If you only had a one acre commercial site, you're not gonna have all the space in the world to dig a wet pond, nor would you even want a wet pond in some sort of small shopping center or Wawa gas station, whatever you're trying to design. So it really depends on the aesthetics that you're trying to achieve and how much space you have on the project. So now that we understand the reasons on why you would choose a dry or a wet pond, let's talk about some of the differences between the two. Let's talk about a wet detention pond first. A wet pond, as we're looking here, has a normal water level line. That's where the water level will typically be during the rainy season. We can notice panning this video over that there is a top of bank surrounding the pond. In between that normal water level and top of bank is where we are holding our designed storm events. The volume between that normal water level and top of bank is able to hold that event and release this water out of a control box into the environment and wherever it goes. Now with these wet ponds, you typically have a permanent pool, which is a pool of water to allow biology do all of its wonderful things to get particles to settle and all of the greases and oils to be treated by biology. And this goes without saying this pond is always meant to be wet. So what about a dry pond? I actually wanna show this video that I took of a dry pond during a storm event. So you can notice here how storm water is hitting all the different pavement, it's going into the inlets, and then it's going into this dry pond. This pond was dry a few days ago until this storm event captured all of this water. So how does this water actually get released though? Well, the first way for a dry pond to release water is actually something called percolation. Typically with dry ponds, you have some nice sands at the bottom of the pond that allows water to percolate into the ground. However, you can also have a control box that we've talked in other videos that can control the water at a certain elevation within the dry pond. It really depends on what you're trying to design for. And I know so many people get confused about retention, detention. I always just like to go to the dictionary for these types of explanations. So detention comes from detain, meaning to hold back temporarily. In stormwater, it means water is detained, held, and then released. So let's think about this dry pond for a second. This dry pond was designed to hold an amount of water for a certain amount of time temporarily until the next storm event. We do not want this pond to be this wet when another storm event happens. 
Now, as far as how long it's being held, if it's a day, two days, this comes from the designer and the municipality and the standards that you're trying to design for. Some municipalities will tell you, hey, you need to design for back-to-back -back storms, meaning let's understand when we snap our fingers of a 25-year, 24-hour design event, see what that elevation is that it gets up to, and then I want you to run that same storm event right then and there at that stage to see what it gets up to. At the end of the day, whatever terminology you want to use, retention, detail, just understand the goal in mind, which is to not have floodwaters go over the top of bank unless it goes into some spillway. Design per your different discharge rates between pre versus post. Don't flood offsite properties and follow your municipality's code. A dry pond is dry, a wet pond's wet. So many people get caught up into retention, detention. Just call it a dry or a wet pond, honestly. And if engineers on here have their own opinions about that, feel free. I know some municipalities might want to understand that terminology in the report, but I don't know. I think there's bigger fish to fry. That's honestly all I have for today, guys. I wanted to keep this short and sweet. I get questions all the time about dry pond, wet ponds, and I hope that this clears it up. It's actually more simple than you think. If you have any questions, please let me know. I try to answer every single comment that I get, and hopefully I see you in the next video. Peace out.